Did you know that we'll soon see cheetahs and lions living in the wild together outside of Africa? And did you know that there's a national park that had just 20 large carnivores in 2004 and now has over 300? Let's dive into three amazing rewilding projects that are bringing apex predators back to their former hunting grounds. First up, in September 2022, after years of groundwork, cheetahs were reintroduced to Kuno National Park in India by a group known as Project Cheetah. Cheetahs once roamed almost all of Africa and much of Southern Asia, from where Asia borders Africa through India and into Bangladesh. But due to persecution and habitat loss, there are now only 40 cheetahs left in the wild in Asia, all found in central Iran. Or at least that was the case until September 2022 when eight adult cheetahs were reintroduced to Kuno from Namibia, joined by 12 more from South Africa just five months later. And there's a plan to introduce 12 more each year for the next eight to 10 years. Now, almost two years on from the initial release, the project has seen some losses, with 10 cheetahs dying from various causes. However, this is a normal mortality rate for cheetah reintroductions when compared to projects in Africa. But it's not all bad news. There have been at least three litters of cubs and there are now 27 cheetahs living wild in Kuno. These cheetahs have been successfully hunting chital and sambar deer, nilgai, which is a large antelope, wild boar and even feral zebu cattle. Typically cheetahs prey on animals weighing between 20 to 60 kg or 45 to 130 pounds so they'd likely only target young animals of the larger species mentioned, like zebu calves and sambar deer fawns. A small side note here, the feral zebu population in Kuno is a rewilding example in itself, albeit an accidental one. Zebu cattle are descended from the extinct Indian aurochs, and so the zebu are acting as proxies for their wild ancestors. Zebus are the largest animals in Kuno, and as cattle are a keystone species, this introduction has restored some vital ecosystem function. Before their extinction in India, cheetahs primarily preyed on black bucks, a beautiful antelope that still inhabits Kuno today. Black buck will likely be an important part of the new Indian cheetah's diet. Currently, most cheetahs in Kuno are kept in 100 hectare or 250 acre enclosures where they hunt and care for themselves. But a small number have the entire park of almost 75,000 hectares or 185,000 acres to roam in. Here they live alongside and compete with Indian leopards, jungle cats and striped hyenas which, unlike their spotted African cousins, tend to be solitary. There are also sloth bears, honey badgers, Indian wolves, Indian jackals and dole which are also known as Asian wild dogs. And while taking a drink, cheetahs have to be wary of mugger crocodiles and gharials. Though in truth, gharials typically don't eat mammals. Tigers don't frequent Kuno very often, but they do use it as a corridor. A male tiger lived in the park for a few days as recently as last year. And who knows, as Indian tiger populations grow and spread, we might see tigers living alongside cheetahs and leopards in Kuno once again. The cheetahs introduced to Kuno are of the Southern African subspecies, one of four subspecies alive today. Project Cheetah would have preferred Asiatic cheetahs, but with only 40 individuals left and only in central Iran, it was much more challenging to relocate and establish a population of them. Cheetahs went extinct in India in 1952, but were actually once used as hunting animals. Much as sighthounds like whippets and lurchers are used today to hunt rabbits and hares, cheetahs were used to hunt black buck, chinkara and other antelopes. If you think it's cool that cheetahs, leopards and sometimes tigers can be found in Kuno, hold on to your hats because there's another rewilding project coming to Kuno. The Indian government hopes to reintroduce Asiatic lions to Kuno National Park. Kuno was once home to lions, cheetahs, leopards and tigers and it could be again in our lifetime. This initiative is aptly named the Asiatic Lion Reintroduction Project. The government is pushing for this project because all wild Asiatic lions currently live in one state, Gujarat. There is a fear that an epidemic or natural disaster could wipe them all out. So a separate population in Kuno would give them a second home and lifeline if something were to happen to the lions in Gujarat. In Gir National Park, Gujarat, Asiatic lions mainly prey on chital and sambar deer, nilgai, domestic water buffalo, and wild boar. They sometimes venture near human habitations to prey on cattle and dromedary camels, and they even prey on mugger crocodiles during the drier months. Interestingly, the main prey of lions in gear are chital, also known as spotted deer, weighing only about 50 kg or 110 pounds, which is unusual as lions typically prefer larger prey, weighing between 190 and 550 kg or 420 to 1200 pounds. 
This is understandable though, as the chital are by far the most common large animal in gear. A 2010 study of ungulate populations, ungulates being hoofed mammals, showed that there were around 65,000 ungulates in gear, with over 80% of them being chital. The zebu cattle I mentioned earlier were actually introduced as a food source to prepare the ecosystem for the lions. If, hopefully when the lions are introduced to Kuno, they will gladly prey on feral zebu cattle and other large herbivores in the park. However, the project has faced challenges. In 2013, the Indian government was ordered by the Supreme Court of India to reintroduce lions to Kuno, but the Gujarat state government has been resistant. They see the lions as an emblem of their region and feel no obligation to allow them to be relocated. Despite the ruling, we are still waiting to see the lions in Kuno. But there is good news. The lion population in Gujarat is increasing rapidly. In the late 19th century, there were only around 12 Asiatic lions left in gear, which was then a private hunting reserve. Thanks to over 100 years of conservation efforts, the Asiatic lion population in Gujarat has grown to more than 670. Over the last 15 years, lions have been spreading out of the national park into different parts of the state, even frequenting beaches. Lions now have been spotted in Barda Wildlife Sanctuary, more than 100 kilometers from Gear. And amazingly, Barda has been chosen for a lion reintroduction, set to be another stronghold with a proposed reintroduction of 40 lions. If your hat fell off when I told you about the lions and cheetahs being reintroduced to India, pick it back up and get ready to lose it again because they're about to hear about the rewilding of Gorengosa National Park, where they've reintroduced African wild dogs, spotted hyenas and leopards, amongst other animals. Gorengosa was once the jewel of Mozambique, with a density and diversity of large animals to match any African national park, but a tragic civil war from 1981 to 1994 almost emptied Gorengosa of its wildlife. Hundreds of elephants were slaughtered for their ivory, and soldiers hunted thousands of zebras, buffalo, wildebeest and other ungulates for meat. The elephant population fell from 2,200 to just 100 animals. Many species were hunted to local extinction, such as rhinos, and as prey animals disappeared, so did the predators. African wild dogs, leopards and hyenas were all completely wiped out. Lions managed to cling on, but in tiny numbers, falling from 200 to just 20. In 2004, Mozambique invited American entrepreneur and philanthropist Greg Carr to help restore the 400,000 hectare or almost 1 million acre park. The government and Carr agreed on a 20 year deal to revive Gorongosa. Due to protection and habitat restoration, herbivore numbers have dramatically recovered. The park now has all its animals back, apart from white and black rhinos, reedbuck and sesebe. With the increase in prey, the lion population has shot back up to 146 animals. In 2018, a pack of 14 African wild dogs was reintroduced to Gorongosa after a 25 year absence. African wild dogs, also known as painted wolves, are the most endangered large carnivore in Africa, so reintroductions like this are vital to ensure the survival of this beautiful animal. Due to the subsequent reintroductions and breeding successes, the wild dog population is now approaching 100. Also in 2018, the first leopard was spotted in Gorongosa, having not been seen in 14 years. To assist leopards recolonizing Gorongosa, reintroductions began in 2020. There have been several reintroductions since, and hopefully, between these efforts and natural migration, their numbers will once again rise into the hundreds. Leopards have the most widespread distribution of any big cat. They live across Africa and Asia, and once even Europe. They live in jungles, grasslands, scrublands and forests, and even cities. So to think that Gorongosa was so depleted of its wildlife that it lost its leopards really hammers home the devastation that was done to the park. The first clan of spotted hyenas was reintroduced in 2022, with six more added in 2023. Sadly, because of the amazing movie that is The Lion King, many people see hyenas as the bad guys of the African savanna, but hyenas are amazing animals. They show loyalty, have loving family relationships, and use teamwork to fend off lions four times their weight. They're not just scavengers either, but exceptional hunters with a higher success rate than any big cat. Apart from big cats and bears, spotted hyenas are the largest land predator in the world. Although typically weighing up to 64 kg or 140 pounds, some spotted hyenas can get to an enormous 90 kg or 200 pounds. 
As we grow to appreciate the beauty and importance of large predators, hopefully we'll see more apex predators reintroduced to their former homes. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video to help the channel grow. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.